Shell with Southern Shell Creates, and I wanted to um, invite you along this journey of how I designed and created a nautical decor item that still has a farmhouse flair. Now, um, I have seen so many nautical decor, summer decor, it seems to be the popular thing right now. As you all know, we've had a, a one wall above our aquarium that is focused on the nautical theme because that's what my husband really enjoys, but the rest of the home is very farmhouse. Farmhouse chic. No, it's farmhouse. <laughs> um, so I tried to put my mind together, my thoughts together, and come up with something that you all have not seen yet but it's not going to cost an arm and a leg to create. So one of the things that I've seen that I thought would make a really beautiful wall piece is the, I don't know what you call it, I guess the, um, like the star on the compass. I don't know what that's called. I am far from being a nautical, um, I don't know what that's called. Let me just leave it at that. I'm gonna show you how you can get your pattern to actually create this. What I, what you're gonna need are these baking sheets from Dollar Tree. So here's a dollar, you get two of these in one pack. You're only gonna need one pack. How awesome is that? One pack, you're gonna need that. You're going to need a small wreath form from Dollar Tree one wreath form, one dollar. That's two dollars for the project at this point. You're gonna need some sort of card stock. It could be poster board. It can be a piece of cereal box. It really doesn't have to cost you anything. But I'm gonna show you an easy way to get that pattern, which is going to be very much like this for one and this for your other. And then you will need um, a, a piece for the inside uh, circle. But I'm gonna show you how to get these. Super simple, it reminds me of a kite. But I'm gonna show you what I came up with. So I've already got it drawn out here, but I am going to flip it over and show you how I came up with this. Thing you're going to do, and you can draw it, or you can score it. Um, it might be easier for me to draw it on here for you. Um, I am going to, since I'm using the scoreboard, I'm gonna use that. Um, let's draw it so you can see it. Okay, so the first line we're going to need is going to be at, I can't read upside down, one and a half, no, one and a quarter inches, yeah, one and a quarter. So I'm gonna come over onto my scoreboard and at the one and a quarter mark, which is right here, um, is where I'm going to actually draw a line. I'm gonna go ahead and score it so I can get that little crevice in there for me. Or you can mark it um, and just draw a straight line down with your ruler. Now, this is just for a point of reference. This is not gonna be cut on, this is just a point of reference. And so my next score line is going to be, <laughs> so we have one and a quarter, one and a quarter, two and a half. So here's my two and a half mark. Three and three quarters. and five. Okay. That's gone. And now we have our cardstock. So at the, we have, right there's the one and a quarter. Right here's the two and a half. Okay. 
Right here is the three and a quarter, three and three quarters, I'm sorry. And right here is five. Now I will have a list of these um, measurements listed down below in the description. So the next thing I wanna do is, like I said, these are just points of reference. So if you notice, I've went ahead and I've starred, put a little star up at the top where those are. So you can come in and come up to your three inch mark and once again, these are just going to be reference points. So if you want to just measure and do these, you can do that. I'm gonna come and there's my three inch mark. That's a whole lot easier than trying to use your ruler, but some of you don't have scoreboards and it's okay. Use a ruler, you can do that. The next point I'm gonna come down to is seven and a half. So here's my seven and a half. And then 11 and a half. So all the way down here at the end. Okay, I am now going to take my mark on my three and a half, I'm sorry, this is three, this is three inches, and then I have one here at seven and a half, and I have one way down here at 11 and a half. Let's go ahead and mark those so you can see them. So you can do this with a ruler and just mark them up. And let's go ahead and draw these lines on here so they can be seen. So like I said, you can do this with a ruler anyway, and you don't need that scoreboard. Just draw your line down. Draw your line down. Draw your line down. So you should have something that looks like this, okay? We're gonna take this three inch line and we've got these three inch intersections. That we're gonna use. And we're gonna use it with our 11 and a half intersection and with our seven and a half intersection. So on your first line at your one and one quarter, you're gonna take your three inch mark, line your ruler up to your 11 and a half inch, I hope I've had my ruler right side up, to your three inch. So 11 and a half intersection up to the edge of your paper where your three inch mark makes it. I'm gonna take my pen and I'm gonna connect those. I'm going to, here's my one and a quarter and I'm gonna to go to two and a half. So this is my two and a half. I'm gonna take where those intersections meet down to my 11 and a half intersection and I'm going to connect them. Now I'm gonna take my two and a half to my seven and a half. And connect them. Now I'm gonna take my five and my seven and a half and connect them. So it kind of looks like a heartbeat or an EKG would look at this point. All kinds of messy lines. Now what I'm gonna do is we're going to take the same intersections at the three inch and we're gonna connect them to the very top. So that would be our zero by one and a quarter. Here's our zero point and our three. So one and a quarter, three line. One and a quarter to our three 
at two and a half, three and three quarters to two and a half. Intersect those lines. Three and three quarters till five. And intersect those lines. So there's our kites. We're going to cut away these areas. So all we have left is this. So let's get cutting. So if you have some sort of heavy duty paper, cardstock, poster board, cereal box, anything like that, and a ruler, you can make this template. Just make your cross point reference stars. And I will show you how simple, again, that is to do. We'll go ahead and do that one more time. I told you guys before I have a hard time cutting. <laughs> That's silly. I must have been absent that day in school. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just trim that bottom off so I can just come right on up. And come right on up. Now, this can be a total Dollar Tree project. And it should not cost you that much to make. Some of these items you may have on hand. Shoot, you could take your pattern pieces, cut out these, if you're gonna use like cardstock or cereal box, cover them in tin foil. So if you have tin foil on hand and cereal box, you can do this. Okay, so once again, how did I come up with this? Make your marks. You want to have at least an 11 and a half by five sheet of some sort of heavy duty cardstock, poster board, chipboard, cereal box, does not matter. You are going to come down from the edge and you are going to find one quarter, put a little star there. You are gonna find two and a half, put a little star there. You're gonna find three and three quarters, put a little star there, and you are going to find five, put a little star there. Do the same thing down at the bottom. You are going to find one and a quarter, and you're gonna make a star. You're gonna find two and a half, make a star. You are gonna find three and three quarters, make a star. You are going to find five, make a star. Next thing I want you to do is I want you to come down three inches from your stars. Put your ruler up, come down three inches, make a star, two stars. Come on over, find three inches, make a star on either side of your ruler, and then draw a line connecting those stars to give you a base point that you know you're coming down to. I want you to come down next to seven and a half. 
So you can come up here and come down and mark seven and a half. And you want to do that on your um, on the one that is three and three quarters, which is right here. You want to make sure that that is where your seven and a half is marked. Seven and a half. There's your star. On your one and a quarter, I want you to come down at eleven and a half. and make a star. There's your reference point. 11, one half, seven, one half, three. Okay, so one, one quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, and five. Okay. So you want to take a look at that, snapshot it, whatever you need to do. I'll have the measurements below as well. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to intersect my lines. So I know that this edge of my paper and this edge of my paper, so I have one and a quarter to three, I'm gonna do paper edge to paper edge, edge to edge, one quarter to three. Now I've come in and at two and a half and three, which is right here, that's where they intersect. You can take that and you can draw it down so you can see it. There's my two and a half and I'm gonna draw it straight down to my three. I'm going to take my three inch up to the top of my paper there at the one and a quarter and I'm going to intersect those lines. Now I want to take and draw it down to my eleven and a half at my one and a quarter line. So I can take and measure down my one and a quarter line all the way down. And then there's my 11 and a half at one and a quarter. I'm gonna match up my three inch to my 11 and a half inch. Sorry, I kept saying 11 and a quarter. And then I'm gonna take my 11 and a half up to my three inch mark on the edge of my paper. There's my kite. I'm gonna do the same thing on the shorter side to my seven and a half. And there we have it. You have one large and one small. And then we're gonna cut these out. I will make sure and have a picture of this posted as well. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my cookie sheets and they come two to a pack and I'm going to make my compass blades. So, I have my templates. I need four large and four small. So if I wanna make sure I've got my placement right and I don't have to worry about anything, I am going to go ahead and draw these on here. And I can use, I can either use my um, scoring tool and I can just press right into this aluminum this little foiled pan and it presses right on in there anything that you can actually just use to press in 
and leave an indentation onto your foil, your foil pan. And yeah, you can see that. I mean, I can see it really well here in person, but I think you, you have a really good idea there as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this over and do another one on this side. I think, yeah, I'm gonna bring it down because I can bring it up pretty close to that side there. Okay, I really didn't think you wanted to sit there and watch me trace onto the foil. Now, I did use my ruler to help reinforce my edge when I was tracing because even though that's a heavy duty cardstock, um, that's heavy duty cardstock. That's really, really good, like little light craft board. Um, when you're pressing into the foil, it does tend to slip some. So I did use my ruler um, to help me reinforce some of the edges when I was when I was um, tracing on there. But I do wanna show you how easy this cuts. These are just regular old scissors. This is what I used to cut on some of my, my foils and some of the, the heavier duty stuff that I don't want my good scissors to get dull on. But look at this, look at how easy that is. I do want you to know, this can be sharp. You must protect yourself. Be very careful when you're cutting this out. And remember that these little shreds, that these little curly cues that you're cutting off um, can be painful as well. So make sure that those go directly into your trash or recycle, recycling whichever you happen to be placing your leftovers in. Okay, so one of the things um, I will use to clean up, especially if I'm cleaning up something that has shavings that may penetrate skin later, I will use a Swiffer dust cloth because coming in, it will clean up and it will grab any of those little shards, whether it be from your paper or from the aluminum. And I don't know if you can see that little shiny stuff on there. There are shavings. Ooh, my little craft little my little craft area was dirty. But there was little lots of little aluminum pieces on there. So glues, little bits of glue strings. Okay. So I have all of my pieces cut out. So what's next? this. I'm just going to use some hot glue on there. I'm going to get that on the inside. And I'm going to press it and pull it. So that it is on the inside of my tent, my can blade there. I want the next blade to come right here. So I'm just going to put a dollop of the glue right on in there, and I'm going to line that up, fold that on down into the glue. Ooh, honey. Remember, it's hot. <laughs> and I want that to come straight down. Okay, let's get our other two on.
shut out. She cannot stand the sound of doors closing around us. <laughs> She's afraid that somebody is here. And it, we live in a very quiet area. But I, and I have the windows and doors open, so she just does not understand all the noise. And it's not noisy. Not at all. I am just coming in and using my ruler as a guide to make sure I've got this as... Um, straight as possible. I mean, it's kind of important that your north, south, east, and west are, are going the right way. At least I think so. And they're nice and straight. Okay. Okay, so now we want to put in the areas that are going to show us the north, northeast, south, southeast, and all them fun little guys. So... Let's go ahead and what I'd like to do is have the edges be about the same. So I'm going to bring that in and fold it over so I know that that is going to be about the same fold as the others. So I'm going to go ahead and line these up and fold them all down that same way. Line it up, fold it down, and now I'm going to go ahead and line these up on the inside and pull them across from each other. A nice good chunk of glue, line it on up, and Pull it out. Alrighty. And we're going to do the same on the opposite side. Put it in. Line it up. Pull it out nice and tight. And because these are all measured the same and we get them lined up in between, we should be equal all the way around. I do want to go ahead and tack this down real quick. And this is just a tack down. It's This hot glue is not a good um, permanent glue. <laughs> it reminded me of a turkey for Thanksgiving when I was doing that. The legs and the wings and... You know, as you're getting ready to clean it. I don't know why that reminded me of a turkey. Flipping it around, I guess. Ugh. The way my mind works sometimes. Yes, I do like to cook. Um, I make a lot of homemade breads and and stuff. It's, it's better for us. <clears throat> healthier for us than buying the store-bought. Now, I do buy store-bought store. I do buy some at the store as well. Um... But sometimes um, I would prefer I would prefer us to have fresh homemade bread because I know what goes into it. So, all right. Pull that nice and tight. We are getting there for sure. I think, I think I may want these a little stiffer. Um, just because I don't want them to bend and, and so forth as artwork. However, um, that means I would use the other, I would need to go get another pack of pans, which I could do. Um, and it would definitely give it some stability. Or when you're making yours um, cut your template 
and use it use your template to actually be the base for this to go on and it'll give you a lot more stability so I may um, just go in and, and put some cardstock behind behind these and um, see what that does okay so I took the lid of our lovely Copenhagen can and I took some leftover of our aluminum baking sheet and I cut it out and rolled it with some hot glue so it goes nice and over the edge and then I trimmed any leftovers off of that and I just used that Gorilla hot glue I'm going to take this piece and it's going to glue right over the top in the center there. Now I'm going to come around and do a bead on the edges here just to seal it in. And that is all the hot glue we are going to need for now. And I cut two out of each because I am going to stack these and give me a little bit of a stronger, um, this is actually a foil card stock, foil poster board. And so I'm just gonna glue these together and this will give me a very thick letter and then that will be attached to one of our long ends. So let's get our letters glued together. And all I'm gonna do is take some of my art glitter glue and just along the thin lines first and then up, make sure I've got my edges. And I'm gonna take and we are going to stack these together nice and even. I find my flat bottom. And then I can press it. And we are good to go. Our letters are glued. How easy was that? Okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get the paint out. Okay. I had everything together and I really didn't like the fact that it looked like a star on a wreath form. And I like the fact when I can take something and transform it into something that you wouldn't know it was. So I went ahead and I cut the wreath form to just one ring. And I went ahead and I cut out some more cardstock, hardboard, whatever you happen to have on hand. And I'm going to go around and I'm going to reinforce this again because I did not like the fact that it was not firm. It was not firm enough for me. So I want to go around and make sure that this has got a nice firm um, grip and it's going to hold its shape. I, I just want it to be like something you would purchase in, in a store of some sort. I don't want it to look like you threw up cardstock and an aluminum pan. So let's go ahead and get all of this together and get the last um, cardstock pieces glued onto the back of this board. So let's go ahead and do that and then I'll get back with you. Okay, so I got the back covered, a little more secure. I feel much better about that. 
Um, I can bend it and shape it as I need to once I get the um, north, south, east, and west on it. And I got my ring. Now with my ring, what I'm going to do is I am going to take some nautical rope and I am going to wrap it around this ring to give it a little bit of um, a distressed, uh, to pull that farmhouse in that's in my home. And I'm also going to take um, my painter's tape and on half um, partial of my um, star pieces, I'm going to have a little bit of distressness to kind of pull in the rest of the, the house decor to match this. So I am going to do the rope and then I'll be back to show you some distress painting to pull this into the rest of the farmhouse that I have in the house. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm coming to the end of my second wrap around. I wrapped it loose enough where you can still see the wire that I spray painted with that um, copper color and that's what I wanted and every now and then I'm coming in and I'm putting a little dollop of hot glue um, and I'm trying to make sure that I'm doing that over the areas that I cut the um, circle off of the wire wreath frame. So I'm just coming up to where I started and I'm going to finish this off with a cut and some hot glue. So we're going to cut that off, bring that around, and we're going to hot glue these two pieces together. And I have a nice braided looking. It's not braided, but it, I really like the way this looks um, in comparison to actually just wrapping it. Um, it looks more like a rope to me, um, a larger rope with some stability. So I do like that. You can still see the wire underneath there. Sorry, my battery's getting low on that. You can still see the wire in there, but it looks like a rope wreath. So I am going to um, go ahead and get my camera charged because I'm about ready to lose y'all. So, okay, so I'm going to tape off just um, little bits of my star here. Do is I'm going to go out with this hammered brown, and this is going to give it a little bit more um, texture on here. It's going to break up this aluminum pan look. It's going to give us a little bit of a different look. So I'm going to finish taping this off. And I'm going to go and spray a coat on here of that brown. And I will be right back. See you in a movie minute. Okay, a quick spray on there of that hammered brown. And let's go ahead and take it off. It has not taken long for anything to dry today outside. It is supposed to be close to 90 today here in Middle Tennessee, um, where others are getting getting pounded and hammered with rain. We, we've had some threats of storms, um, but we've had some pretty warm days here. So, it is not taking long for any of this to dry um, once I spray it outside. Now it looks like a pinwheel, but let's keep going. You never know what you're gonna get. Never know, you never know.
Not with me, anyway. All right. Let's... I pulled up some of these ends. We'll do some touch-ups on these ends once we get everything kind of painted because I know I'm going to be moving stuff around quite a bit. But right now, I have my mineral paint. And what I want to do is I'm going to dry brush over this puppy. And it. I'm hoping that this just kind of tones it down. This is um, Mineral Chalk Paint by Waverly. I get this at um, Walmart. And I use the other I just flip my board over and use the other side for painting. So I really don't care, you know, what kind of gets on there. But I really just wanted a good base of color kind of popping through here. So. Now what I would like to do. I'm really, I'm really liking this so far. It's definitely definitely different I've never seen any anybody else do anything like this but okay let's see let's see what this looks like I think I want to put some some rope around this center here don't know I have some smaller twine That might work. I think what I want to do though is take some of the antique wax and just um, do some antiquing on here and some antiquing on the rope and that may pull it together. I do think um, I may want to add maybe a little bit of um, a rusty element and I seen on one of the, the young ladies that I watch, she <clears throat> uses glue and cinnamon. Oh my goodness, who, who does that? I don't remember if it was Kristen K, if it was Jay. Um, oh my goodness, I can't remember. But um, that is a very unique look and it brings just a touch of dimension um, of where it lo and it looks like rust. So I may do that on, on a couple of these um, where you have your north up here and it'll look like the elements have rusted parts of this. And I think that's what I'm gonna do with this. But let me go ahead and get the antique brown wax and get our letters waxed up and attached and we will get it onto our ring and we will get it rusted up. See you in a movie minute. Okay, so antique <laughs> wax. Um, it is for chalk paint and it is, you put this over your projects and it actually seals it a little bit. It, it will help seal that, so that chalk paint um, it seals it in there. You have a clear wax and you have an antique wax. And so you wanna um, wipe it on and wipe it off. So um, the more you wipe on, the more effect of your antiquing you're going to get. So bring it on in, and I have it on, an, on a napkin here. You can use a napkin, a, a dry cloth. I'm gonna dab a little bit off. Dust that up there, kind of on these sides over here. And then I'm gonna wipe it on down. And I, you know, as I wipe this, it spreads that antique wax across my project. wipe it back off if I wanted a little lighter there 
<laughs> wipe knocking off my letters. Rotate this around. This one's not been wiped off yet and it sat there. So it is going to kind of hold on to that color a little bit more. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna put this one so they're all about that same darkness. There we go. There we go. Rotate that around. You can see a little bit of that copper kind of aged copper looking now. It, it usually has a little green in it. I did not add any green to this. Um, let's roll this on around. I want to bring some onto this rope. And that's going to help these colors all tie in. So this rope's not going to look brand new. Look at that. Oh my word. Isn't that pretty? We're just going to Rub some of this antique wax right across that rope. There we go. Okay. Now I have my glue and I have the magic ingredient. Cinnamon. Cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon. This from the Dollar Tree. And, of course, my art glitter glue. May May made it. I also have, of course, your hot glue, but I really don't want big, clumpy chunks. I have, this is Aileen's Tacky Glue. And I have my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. So, I think, I think I'm going to go with the Nouveau today. Let's see how that works on this type of project. Let's go ahead and get some, let's get some on this side where I've got that, more of that copper color here. And right on through here, right on around these edges. All right, like that end. I am going to, Paper underneath it so that I can reuse it. Here's our cinnamon. We're just gonna dust it on there. Sorry about that noise. The neighbors are doing um, some construction on their home. Okay, I'm gonna tip it up. And I'm just gonna tap it off. Tap it off. ready to reuse. Holy rusted metal, Batman. What? Look at that. What does that look like? That looks like a rusty metal star. I love it. I love it. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Swiffer will work well when I'm ready for it. Okay, that's gonna need to put away. All right. Let's get that puppy on there. Let's get her on there. And I do have one more glue stick, so that's good. and hot. Add on there. Add on up. Okay. 
for now. What I would like to do is come in and dust off some of that cinnamon. Look at that. Oh yeah. Because that glue has now dried. I'm gonna clean up this mess and then I will be back and we will go ahead and we will distress our letters. Back in a movie minute. Guess what? It's been a movie minute. Whoop whoop. All right, sorry. I am back and I am going to take some chalk paint to knock back the shine on my letters. And this is the Waverly Chalk Mineral. And I am just gonna use a paper towel because I don't need a whole lot. I'm gonna take just a part of a paper towel here and I'm gonna dab and brush, kind of just tap, 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 tap and brush that right on off of there. The paper towel is here and it works. So here is with one coat of the mineral and it is just knocked the shine back. And I'm gonna use a little bit of this um, antique wax on top of that. And if you remember, I just want, I want a little bit of the color because I don't want, I mean, I want this to stand out. I may just, hmm, let's put a little on here and see. I don't want it to blend in because then you won't be able to see it. So I wanna kinda go, let's go on some of these edges and then kinda blot it. Well, that's kinda interesting. That might work. And see how this stands up. Because we want it to stand out. And that blends in a little too much. Let me take a little bit more of that mineral on here. Okay. Let's get these babies on. Some smaller twine. And we are going to have this. And I am going to loop it around the back here. Just loop it around, just like that, and loop this one around, just like that, and I am going to give that nice bit of hot glue right there where it's holding to that back card. to tie it down on this side and give it a nice knot. And glue it down on this side. I'm going to come right on up here and give it a nice knot. And this will be what we hang our lovely nautical compass star. Rustic nautical compass star. Goodness, ain't that a combination? Ooh, honey, that was hot. Okay. I will insert pictures at the end. 
and you will have seen this in the thumbnail. Let me know what you think. I'm much, um, I'm more pleased at how it turned out this time around. So that's what you have to do sometime with crafting is start on one path thinking you know how it's going to look and it just doesn't just doesn't match up with the vision you had and so just keep going just keep going it's crafting there's no wrong way to do it oh thank you for joining me today i had a blast and i will continue to go continue to grow and continue to see you my subscribers my viewers as a miracle if you like this video please give me a thumbs up let me know who you are if you've just found me on youtube let me know just let me know what you think i am pleased to be able to share my projects with you thank you have a wonderful day see you in a movie minute